Hello and welcome once again to The Blueprints. This is Canada's Conservative Podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Schmale, Member of Parliament for Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes, Brock, with new content for you every single Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We ask that you like, comment, subscribe, share this program. If you can't listen or watch it to its entirety, right this second, download it, listen to it on platforms like CastBox, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, you name it, it is out there. I guarantee you this is a message that you are not hearing in the mainstream media. And with that, we have an amazing guest, Layla Goodrich, Member of Parliament for Fort McMurray, Cold Lake in the beautiful province of Alberta. We're talking about something I think that is hitting households no matter where you are in this country. And it's been a few months now, we've had a major shortage in this country. Any parent will know this. You go to the store, you see bare shelves, you see near empty shelves of children medication for well kids medication for for fever and other pain relief methods so we're going to bring on Leila thanks for being here thank you Jamie very serious topic but there is relief coming before we rewind the tape on how we got there let's just put some parents at ease uh, some relief is coming yeah so Health Canada did announce uh, yesterday in fact that they have managed to secure some foreign supplies that will be hitting retail shelves in the coming weeks. They didn't really specify what the coming weeks means and how it's going to be distributed, but uh, it is a step in the right direction. And for parents out there that are currently struggling, there are options and they're, they're expensive. So they're, it's not the best option. Um, but if you're in a pinch and you do need Tylenol or Advil for your kid, you can go to a compounding pharmacy. So if you look up on online, a compounding pharmacy, the pharmacist can make up and put it into the syrup and give you the appropriate dosage. Or um, depending on your community, they might not be able to do that, but they can explain to you how to split uh, adult dosage and how to mix it and give the appropriate dose for the age and size of your child. And I would say, I would urge any parent that's looking to do this, don't go online to look to find this call a pharmacist, get the professional's information before trying to do this at home. And compounding pharmacies are very hard to find. Not all communities have them. You might have to drive a while to find them. They are very specialized. They are specialized, but it is an option mm -hmm. for Absolutely. for that. It's, it's quite expensive. It doesn't last for terribly too long, uh, but it, it's better than nothing. So I, I give this to parents that are really struggling. That is a potentially an option to look at. So according to CBC, the government is taking, and I quote, extraordinary measures to help uh, introduce more supply into the marketplace here. And uh, according to the health minister, he seems to claim it's going to be months, uh, the equivalent of months of supply on the shelves eventually. Some people may be seeing relief already, but uh, it, it is, I think, for anybody in the last few months that is going from one store to the other, finding empty shelves, this will be some relief, uh, some breathing room here. Yeah, but again, we don't know when it's going to actually hit the retail shelves. Mm -hmm. We do know that they've managed to supply, find enough supply that our hospitals won't run out. So that's a step in the right direction. Our hospitals will not run out of children's acetaminophen and ibuprofen, which are the generic names for these two drugs. But we don't know exactly when they're going to hit the retail shelves. But it's not a global supply chain. We've seen stories in the media about people driving, if they can, across the border into the United States and accessing supply quite easily. Well, yeah, so I'm sure your constituents uh, have the, the luxury of being able to cross the border uh, relatively really. <laughs> quickly and easily um, and being able to cross the border. And I've seen tons of photos. I've actually had people send me photos from their vacations. Uh, some of my constituents were down in Nevada and they sent me some pictures um, of fully stocked shelves and uh, where you could even pick what flavor you wanted. So it's not a, a global issue like the government tries to say it is. It seems to be a made in Canada problem. Yeah, it definitely seems to be that way. And, and I'm gonna give you full credit for this. You were raising alarm bells, I think, almost in May and April. When you, I'll let you share your personal story. I don't want to take that away from you, but how you came to realize and kind of uh, investigate a little further what, what was actually going on back in April and May. Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a first-time mom. I've got a little guy. Uh, he's now 14 months old. And so as he was teething, um, we started to realize that, like, you're using this medication to control so that little kids don't suffer in pain. 
And I couldn't find it on the shelves in April in Fort McMurray, and that kind of seemed weird. But I'm a first-time mom. We're in COVID. There's all kinds of supply chain shortages. I remember the to toilet paper that was out for, for weeks on end and months on end in some communities. So I wasn't all that concerned. I just thought it might have been an issue in my community. And then I started looking a little bit further and realizing, no, this is a much wider spread issue. And the last time I actually saw it on the shelves in my community um, in any amount of supply was in May, um, which is a long, a long time. That's a long time. That's a very long time. And, and the government of Canada finally acknowledged that it was a problem in August, but with no real I think they basically movement. did a, a press conference, a Health yeah, Canada did a press conference. They just said, like, they put out a release saying that we acknowledge that there's a shortage. Oh, okay, wonderful. But what are you doing about it? No, no information about what parents could do because of the shortage, no information telling them about the compounding pharmacies, no, n no real solution, just we acknowledge there's a problem. Uh, and, and that stresses parents out. Yes. And so I started seeing more and more of parents going on to social media forums uh, and saying like, I can't find Tylenol or Advil for my kids. Does anyone have any, like this fever is spiking, I don't wanna go to the emergency room. And I would see story after story like this and parents that were like, you know what, I have no other option now. I'm taking my kid to the ER. And only taking their kid to the ER because they had a fever. And we're seeing that now our overcrowded emergency mm -hmm. rooms from coast to coast to coast. And we, we heard from testimony today at the health committee that kids are presenting with simple fevers because parents can't find these drugs and so they're showing up in our emergency rooms. And I don't blame them. A sick child is horrible. Absolutely. And, and so this is something that like, we can and must do better. And as a as a parent, you will do pretty much anything for your for your child. Exactly, and I sit there for myself, and I got really frustrated when I found out that the supplies, the shelves were completely stocked in the states, mm -hmm. and you could even pick your flavor, and and that really gets to me because I'm um, I don't know I don't even know how many hours away from a border I am, but more than ten hours from the US border. So I wouldn't have even contemplated crossing the border to go get this. Um, but I've now since <laughs> thought about it. And mm -hmm. I know a lot of parents that have crossed the border and they're making these trips and they're offering to bring some back for friends and family. And that's wonderful, but why are families having to go to that extreme length to get this medication? Why can't the government possibly look at some of the regulations we have in place to make sure that we don't end up in this place. That would be really nice. We talked about the media conference. Health Canada has the, the press release saying that we acknowledge there's a shortage. Nothing was really done, but you raised it in question period. Then our leader, Pierre Polyev, raised it in question period. And finally, it appeared in the headlines in the mainstream media. Finally, the government started talking about it. And I believe the NDP even clued in and said, yeah, there's a bit of a shortage here. There's a problem. But yet, it was happening in our communities. Oh, and it had been happening for six months. Today at Health Committee, we found out that Health Canada has known that this is a problem since the spring. Crickets. They have no real good answer as to why all of a sudden they've only started talking about it in the last two weeks. But you and I both know that it's because we finally decided to take this issue to a larger scene. I've been bringing this up in Health Committee since September. I've been talking to colleagues about it since the spring. So it's not like this was an issue. This was an issue we were trying to solve and not bring it into question mm -hmm. period because frankly, this is children's health. Yes. This it's isn't something, this it, is not partisan. I don't think a single person and I don't think anyone has ill will on the other side, but everything this government has touched is broken. Mm -hmm. And now we are letting children suffer in pain because we can't get our stuff together to get this medication on the shelves. And they just yeah. blame parents. They say parents are stockpiling as if somehow yeah, that, that is too. the problem. Yeah, you know what? Too. Show me the evidence. Yeah, very good point. Yeah, I, I don't think parents are are stockpiling. I think they're they're trying to prov provide the necessary relief for their kids who are who are suffering. And I think to the point we've tried to make on energy, the price of energy, the price of food, the, the long waits on Veterans Affairs. It did not need to get to this point. I think that's the ongoing theme. There were things in place the government could be doing. They aren't doing. Why are people camped outside a passport office? 
Why are veterans still waiting for the benefits they deserve? And, and it, you're right, it just seems like everything this government touches is broken, but their solution to everything is another government program to fix the mess they made in the first place. Well, and, and I think this is part of the issue, is that like, why haven't they been engaging and giving out information on this? And I think that it's a problem that is goes well beyond this issue to so many other issues. And as, as a young mom, uh, I'm giving a voice to all of the parents that are struggling. Because when I first couldn't find Tylenol and Advil on the shelf, I thought I was going crazy. I thought that it was my problem and I was just had bad luck. And I'm a first time mom, so it's not like I've been like actively looking for these for like a decade. Maybe this was, this is normal, I don't know. But to realize that this is a common problem that parents from coast to coast to coast are having, um, I figured it needed to have the importance of them knowing that politicians care. We, mm -hmm. we, we see their struggle and we're gonna make it better. And we're now hearing that there are shortages of some of the prescription medication yes. that's critical for kids like amoxicillin and erythromycin um, that are basic generic um, medications for antibiotics for mostly used for kids. And so we need to get down to the bottom of all of these issues to make sure that Canada has what we need so our kids aren't unnecessarily sick. And it goes back to a point you made a little while ago when you said the government needs to, well, we think anyway, we, we believe the government needs to reevaluate some of the rules, regulations, and red tape they have in place that could have prevented this. But also the fact, not aside for the fact that they did not move quick enough to fix this thing, that we should be examining because how we were able to, according to this report, import this medication from the United States and Australia was the fact that a lot of the rules, regulations, and red tape were relaxed temporarily to allow additional supply to come in. Should we not be looking at that from the beginning? Well, and I, I think that this is a, a, a critical thing that all governments of every level need to be doing a better job at is looking at what the regulatory burden is and what unnecessary red tape exists. Where is government getting in the way of people getting the service they need? And it's not about being relaxed on safety. This is about making sure that we don't unnecessarily have rules in place. So one of the questions I've had, and I haven't even thought to bring this up to officials yet, so I'm just spitballing this, but is it a situation where we have limits on the size of doses that can be sold in Canada that don't exist in other countries? So we couldn't import right. the domestically produced stuff because we can only have 100 milliliter bottles and everywhere else can have bigger bottles. I'm not sure. Is it that we have specific rules around the packaging and the children's um, tops? These are all kinds of questions that like, we know that Health Canada has ridiculous rules in place when it mm -hmm. comes to window coverings, when it comes to baby walkers that you can get in most every other country, but you can't get in Canada because they're illegal. There's, there's all kinds of regulations in place, and, and many of them are in place because kids did get hurt. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and so some of these are in place for a good reason. And my question comes, but do we have technology where we can mitigate those risks? And so then, do we actually need to have all those regulations? Absolutely, and the government, in my opinion, should be always evaluating, always evaluating the, the rules, regulations, red tape that they have in place so that they are serving the, the constituents, the taxpayers, to the best of their ability. Exactly, and it's, it's about making sure we're actually there to serve Canadians, not telling Canadians what the government can do for them. Absolutely, absolutely. So I, I think that this is just the tip of the iceberg. We're going to continue holding them to account because they've been pretty vague. So even though there is relief coming and we know that we're, our hospitals aren't going to be shorted, um, we don't know when it's going to hit the retail shelves. We don't know when parents are going to be able to just go to the store and find it. Um, so we're going to keep pushing them because frankly, left to their own devices, who knows what's going to happen. <laughs> That's actually a very good point. Left to their own devices, you have a gap of about three months where nothing really happens. Well, that yeah. and like, there aren't a lot of young parents in Parliament. True. So yeah. this is an issue that even the first few times I brought it up, it was like, well, is this really a government problem? But I think it is. We, our government, if our government has gone in and stepped over people in so many different ways in the last three mm -hmm. years. If there is one place that the government should probably be stepping in, it's here. Well, I would say it is a government program problem because if there are rules, regulations, and red tape, 
hindering the importation of that medicine that could have been on the shelves, then that, that is a problem. If it's a labeling issue with English and French, the Pharmacists Association were more than happy to put labels, like print labels off, stick them to the box, right? There, there were solutions in place. But if the government said, no, we have to have a certain kind of font or whatever, and that stopped it, well, that's a problem because kids and kids are suffering and parents are getting a little nervous or they were way past nervous by now. Well, and that, this is the problem is that parents are under already so much stress. This is just another piece where the government has kind of overlooked that entire demographic. And like, I'm here. I'm a voice for parents from coast to coast to coast. Um, our entire conservative team takes this exceptionally seriously. And I think that it's something that I look forward to continuing to bring forward problems that are important to young parents and families all across this country. Well, I know uh, for a fact that I was getting emails for quite some time about this, just parents saying, hey, is this a problem? Same kind of thing you said. You start off saying, well, okay, maybe this is maybe normal. Then it started to progress and it got to the point where, yeah, this is not normal. So we're kind of out of time here, um, but I always give the guests the, the floor for the final word. You can say anything you want about this topic or anything else you, you feel the need to. Well, I want to thank you for bringing a platform to this critically important issue. And uh, to anyone listening at home um, or wherever they happen to listen, um, if you have any questions, if you're running into problems, don't hesitate to reach out to our offices. Um, we're here to serve. We're here to help. Absolutely. Layla Goodridge, Member of Parliament for Fort McMurray, Cold Lake in the beautiful province of Alberta, the northern part of Alberta, the, the I guess the star, the jewel yeah. of Alberta. Oil sands. <laughs> Absolutely. We appreciate your time as well. And with this topic, very serious topic, please like, comment, subscribe, share this program. I know in your social media network there are parents who are struggling that would love this information. Please do that. Tell them you can download it on platforms like CastBox, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, you name it, it is out there. New content every single Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Until then, low taxes, less government, more freedom. That's the blueprint.